Hi, I'm Daniel Bergman. And I'm Oscar Havelin. You're watching Fly TV, and today we're doing this. Welcome to Flight V. I'm uh, Daniel Bergman and we're here at the Rena River in Norway. And with me I have uh, Lars and Petter from Rena Fiskekamp, who sort of operates the guiding business up here. Uh, and of course my dear buddy Oscar Haglin, our Swedish uh, streamer guru. We're gonna see if we can locate some big early season trout here in the Rena River gonna be nice. Uh, so we're in the upper parts on the uh, what's the fly stretch? Oh we had a riser. Uh, this is uh, the fly stretch of the of the Rena River. It's the upper part. Um, here it's only wade fishing. You can't use like a canoe or boat or something but later on we're gonna do a, a long drift further downstream uh, in the drift boat. So I'm really excited to be here with Oscar, who, who was the one who actually pulled me down this streamer swamp some years ago. Uh, so what's your story with this streamer tossing business? Yeah, I started as a dry fly fisherman, of course. Uh, and then uh, I found out about uh, the nymph fishing. Uh, did that for, for 20 years and I suddenly realized that uh, the biggest trout I ever caught was a two kilo trout. And I thought that I, I had to do something about it. And uh, started reading uh, on the internet and YouTube movies. And I found these uh, big streamers. Uh, and it's a, it's a well known fact that uh, big trout eat big fish. And uh, so I started tying these big ones and uh, practicing for a couple of years. And uh, I think it was after two years I got my my ten pounder, uh, and then I was caught. I finally found something hooked into something. I have no idea what it is yet, but it was a solid strike. Yay! It's a beauty! Look at that! Wow! That's a proper fish. Look at the colors on it. It's like almost like orange. We're on! Yeah, good work. This is the first. And it's a real beauty. Look at this beauty, it's a proper Rena trout. Yeah. Like almost orange, copper in the color, and big spots. Did it take on the strip or uh, on the swing, or how did you get it? Uh, I really. Sorry. He was fast! <laughs> Oh, it's, it's like four degrees in the water, or five, uh, five degrees in the water, so they're really, uh, they don't get tired. <laughs> no. And I can feel it in my hands. They hammered this uh, marabou sculpin. So the plan worked out, fish deep, fish sort of slow, and it just killed it. So Lars, that's how they look. Yeah, they're uh, really beautiful yeah. in this river. And that was a proper wild rena yeah. trout. Yeah, uh, it's as wild as they get. We don't do any stocking in this river, so no. everything is natural. 100% natural yeah. fish. Yeah. That's really nice. 
Yeah, it is. And they are beautiful, like uh, a bar of copper or something. Yeah. We're on. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it's some sort of fish. Whoa. What the hell happened there? That take wasn't really as hard as the trout, <laughs> but uh, well, it seems to be <laughs> a proper sized grayling though. <laughs> well, that's not a baby grayling. <laughs> it's a good sized grayling. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. So the grayling also like these big streamers, at least the big guys. Okay, so let's let this baby go back. <laughs> I like it, Anna. It seems as if the morning fishing is over. Um, so we'll head back to camp and later in the afternoon we'll hit the drift boat instead. Uh, so we're a bit further down and it's a little bit later in the afternoon and now we're going to, to drift the river. Uh, and Lars said we're going to drift for like 10 hours. Um, and what we're planning to do then is to cover as much water as possible. The drift actually allows you to fish places where, where you can't reach from land and you can fish them in a different manner. You can actually cast close to the bank and fish, fish deep holes and stuff. So it's going to be really exciting. This is my first time in a drift boat. So let's get going. <coughs> We have been fishing for maybe 10 minutes here and uh, Lars here, our eminent guide, has seen five or six fish, but uh, maybe my fly goes a little bit too shallow, so I will put this on and see if I can get down to them a little bit faster. Our guide told me it's light colors and that's of course a rule when you have a the light weather you take a light colored fly so uh, yeah we'll see what happens i'm breathing in and breaking down i feel my time is running out the fire in my heart will burn me to the ground I did my part, I tried my best The things I'm fighting to protect Always shatter into pieces in the end So this far uh, it seems as if the bigger trout has been a bit shy because of the strong sun uh, but it's a bit later in the evening now and the sun is starting to set a little bit, uh, so I think we're sort of approaching big trout hour. So let's get going. We're searching the, the fish uh, near the banks here. Uh, the fish are, are standing there because you have overhanging branches and you have underwater logs. And also the, the water is a bit slower. Uh, just because of the, the bank, so yeah, that's, that's the place to, to search. I had some, some uh, followers here and uh, one tip for you and for me is to uh, tie a smaller one on a line behind the big one. And you tie it on the front hook here. A lot of people think that it will tangle, but uh, it will tangle, but not very often. 
probably the, the followers will follow and see this little fly and, and take it as a snack. And that's our game plan. Anyways, let's see if it works. I gotta say, this looks awesome. If I was a trout, I would eat both of them. See the color on this one? It's like orange. It has an orange belly. It might have been the prettiest fish I have ever caught. Okay, go back. Well, look at this. Uh, I found one more. And this is actually even heavier. Well, look at that. It's closer to two kilos, I think. Oh, lovely. Come on, baby. Booyah! <laughs> Well, the last two fish ate the eyes of it, but it's a black and purple, drunk and disorderly. Sort of worked. Awesome. So, it's a new day. Um, we decided to go further up again to the fly stretch uh, to do some wade fishing and see if the fish are willing today. There are many ways to uh, retrieve a fly. Of course you can just strip it home uh, like you normally do. Um, but one technique that is really good that gives a, a lively fly some really nice action is to jerk strip. And that just means you're pulling home line uh, while you're moving the rod tip forward. So you're sort of picking up slack line and pulling it back with the rod. And especially flies that uh, has like a side to side movement, uh, it gives, gives the fly some really erratic action. Using a 300 grain line uh, on an eight weight rod and that's because it's really deep outside here. And even though we're using these really heavy sculpins and the 300 grain line, uh, we're not actually touching bottom 20 meters out there, uh, even when we're casting upstream. Um, so you need to get down, especially when it's really cold in the water like this. Uh, it's only five degrees, so down deep and dirty. Yes, I got a fish here, and it's a trout. And hopefully I will get it in the net. This one. Awesome, buddy! Yeah! Woo! Small one, but it's a trout. What did you get it on? It was a cream soda in a brown color. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, it's been some great days. Yeah, many casts. A lot of stripping. I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. Head back home to Svealala. Let's go.